Hello, here are the morning news. Two police officers were shot in front of a police station in Ferguson, Missouri, as a protest over racism and policy was wrapping up. One officer from St. Louis County and another from Western Groves were injured. Protesters had gathered in front of Ferguson Police Department early Wednesday night to demand further reforms just hours after Police Chief Thomas Jackson announced that he had resigned his post following a damning Justice Department report that identified racially based practice in Ferguson policy. Video on social media captured at the moment of the shooting with panicked protesters fleeing the scene after gunshots were heard. St. Louis County Police Chief John Bomer held a press conference outside the hospital where the injured officers are being treated. At midnight the crowd was starting to break up. In fact several of the officers had left the area and to the immediate uh, north northwest of the Ferguson Police Department, uh, several shots were fired, at least three, and two officers were struck. A St. Louis County officer was struck in the shoulder, and a uh, Webster Groves police officer was struck in the face. Both those officers are here right now. They're being treated. Venezuelan authorities continue to denounce threats against the country. The Obama administration labeled the South American nation a so-called threat to national security. National Assembly President Diosdado Cabello revealed that the regional head of the National Endowment for Democracy, U.S. organization that funnels hundreds of millions of dollars to opposition groups and politicians, arrived in the country late February. Cabello said that U.S. officials changed her appearance to evade being monitored before meeting with opposition groups in Venezuela. On Saturday, February 28th, Rene Miriam Kornblythe, the Latin America and Caribbean Director of the National Endowment for Democracy, or NED, landed at the Simón Bolívar International Airport in Maiquetía. This is the institution that North American imperialism uses to fund terrorist and subversive groups under the guise of being NGOs. And following President Juan Manuel Santos' suspension and airstrikes on FARC rebels for months, the head of the government's peace delegation has mixed signals about a bilateral ceasefire Wednesday. However, as our correspondent Natalia Margarita reports, experts and peace activists want this to lead the broader initiatives to de-escalate the conflict. Security and defense expert Alejo Vargas considers this latest decision as highly significant as air strikes have been one of the main attack strategies used by the government against the FARC in the past 10 years. If the government stops using air strikes from one month, that evidently means that the suspension of the most lethal weapon they have been using, and that is an important step taken by the government in the direction of de-escalating the confrontation. Farmers' movements and rural sectors have also reacted positively to the announcement, as they are the ones that know all too well the enormous damages that air strikes inflict on civilians. It results in collateral damage on the rural population living in the conflict regions, resulting in damaging of houses, losses of animals and crops, and all the terror that airstrikes create among civilians, especially children. So the decision to suspend airstrikes has been received with joy. For analysts, this is the first concrete response from the government to the FARC's unilateral ceasefire implemented in December last year, but it is also a decision that brings the greatly expected end of hostilities one step closer. So with this latest measure of halting airstrikes on the FARC, plus the recently agreed demining operation, as well as the technical commission for peace being underway, what we would expect is that over the course of the next two or three, maximum four months, a verifiable bilateral ceasefire could be reached. In addition to the progresses in the peace talks, an advisory commission for peace has been appointed, bringing together people from different political opinions like Clara Lopez, president of the leftist opposition party. We have many differences with the government and with the, the president's policy regarding economic issues, social issues, uh, the management of the state. But of course, in the peace process, uh, we have always uh, given our most active support. As social organizations have welcomed the decision taken by the government, they have also called on the president to finally start negotiations with the second largest guerrilla, the ELN. From Bogotá, Natalia Margarita, Telesur.
The Chilean government introduced a new presidential advisory council to develop measures to combat corruption. The 16-member group is taxed with presenting a plan dealing with conflict of interest between government and private factors. The announcement comes as the so-called Pedagate, in which politicians from all stripes have been accused of tax fraud, money laundering and influence peddling, has Chilean society heavily criticized in the entire political establishment. Producers announced the cancellation of the TV show they were filming in Argentina at the time of the helicopter crash that killed three star athletes. Officials from France's BEA Air Accident Investigation Authority arrived at the site in Argentina's La Rioja province, where the two helicopters crashed on Monday, killing all ten on board. Olympic champion swimmer Camille Mufoir, Jet woman Florence Sarto, and Olympic boxer Alexis Bastino, who were all filming a reality TV show called Dropped, died in the accident. The production company of the French reality show said they will not restart the filming after the tragedy. We have lost people that we valued, so you can imagine the atmosphere. There have been a lot of tears, many difficult moments, and there will be many more. And around the world, on the verge of bankruptcy and dealing with the ongoing crisis to its ease, Ukraine accepted a massive bailout package from the International Monetary Fund. The IMF approved a 17.5 billion four-year aid program for Ukraine. Recently, the U.S. also agreed to send military aid to bolster key forces against rebels in the east. The IMF last year approved a 17 billion two-year loan to Ukraine. It is aimed at providing financial stability to the country, said Managing Director Christine Lagarde. About an hour ago, the board meeting of the IMF approved uh, the Ukraine program that will provide additional financing for four years and hopefully help that country uh, restore its situation, provided that stability can be maintained thanks to the uh, ceasefire and Minsk agreement that was uh, hopefully negotiated with great skills by uh, leaders, including sitting next to me. Thank you. Thousands turned out in the Belgian capital of Brussels to protest reforms to the labor laws being pushed for by the government of Prime Minister Charles Mitchell. The law proposed a harsh neoliberal measures, including raising the retirement age and an automatic wage indexation to inflation and curbing the negotiating power of unions. More rallies are proposed with public sector workers planning demonstrations on March the 19th, while other provinces have called protests by the end of the month. Australian authorities have offered to pay the cost of keeping two content drug dealers in prison for life in Indonesia, agrees to commune their death sentence. Australian Foreign Minister Julia Bishop has been repeatedly making pleas to Indonesia to spare the lives of two Australian citizens convicted of a plot to smuggle hearing out of a country. Despite the diplomatic pressure and the growing celebrity list back in, the appeals including billionaire Richard Branson, Jakarta has rejected all offers to date. The offer comes even as the Australian government stresses financial difficulties to justify massive cuts, including 409 million slash from the Aboriginal services budget. An otherwise most cat player announced uh, his retirement from international football. Diego Forlan played 112 games for Uruguay, scoring 36 goals and leading Uruguay's memorable 2010 World Cup campaign that saw La Celeste finish fourth. Forlan was awarded the Golden Ball as the best player of the tournament and was joined top score with five goals. The 35-year-old striker said it was an extremely difficult decision to make, but added that he plans to continue to his club career. Diego Forlan currently plays in Japan's J-League. 
As the most anticipated boxing fight indicates it draws nearer, the two star contenders uh, held their pre-fight event before close to 700 journalists. Floyd Mayweather Jr. and Filipino Manny Pacquiao held a press conference to talk up their fight during much anticipated on May the 2nd. The fight at the fan MGM Grand is expected to set all sorts of records, including high purses and most pay-per-view sales. And defeated champ Mayweather promised an epic spectacle. Okay, that's when the world stops. I want everyone to tune in. Mayweather Pacquiao. The biggest fight in boxing history. Thank you. More on this in our website, telesurtv.net slash English. Have a nice day.